really and truly a blessing. <clears throat> I want to ask this morning if you just pray. Father, we ask this morning that you just let your anointing be upon this word. God, Lord, let it come across, Father, as you would have it to be. Touch our lives. Let your anointing flow to the words, Father, and Father, me as I speak the words. Lord, help me through this obstacle, this situation, this code. And God, Lord, touch each one that's here this morning. Open our hearts, our minds, our ears. Let God, we'd apply this life, this word to our life. In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> we are all given a, a chore. We're all given, uh, as, as that song says, a hand dealt. And it's going to be according to how we play it. Now, folks, if we'll keep our hands, a hold of the hands that are nail scarred for us, we don't have to never worry about losing. We might go through rough times and we might be sweating things out, but we're never going to lose the battle as long as we will hold on to God's nail scarred hands. It doesn't matter how big the opposition, it doesn't matter how big the foe, it doesn't matter how many, as long as we will hold on to Jesus' nail scarred hands, we're going to certainly come out to be the victorious. We might have to look at the situation that as, as Peter did when he stepped out of the boat. He stepped out of the boat and he got to look at it and he was walking to Jesus. But then he got to realizing the situation around him. And it says that fear struck him and he immediately started to sink. But then it also says that immediately Jesus reached down and grabbed him and picked him back up. Why? Because the master was there and he was not going to let one of his be left alone. He was not going to let one of his be hurt during the process. We're going to go through many situations in our life. We're going to fight many battles. But as long as we have God on our side, as long as we can trust and believe, it doesn't matter how big your adversary gets, God is bigger. Because greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. And I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me as long as I will rely upon His Word and as long as I can trust upon His Word, as long as I will live my life for Him and call out to Him. We don't have to worry. In 2 second, in second Samuel, <coughs> this morning, we're going to talk about a guy that I've mentioned briefly uh, a time or two before. He's in two whole verses of the Bible in this one part. And he's one of the mighty men of David. And he had a situation arise in his life to where he had to make up his mind what he was going to do. Was he going to take a stand? Was he going to fight? No matter that he was outnumbered. No matter that he was outpowered. No matter that he was in a spot that really wasn't even able to be defended. But he made up his mind to follow God and didn't let anything else hinder him. In 23 and 9 it says, And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodu, Do the, the Aohite, one of the three mighty men of David. And when they defied the Philistines that were gathered there together to, to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away, he arose and he smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. And after him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop. And there was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. And verse 12 says, But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. When the enemy comes at you, he's coming at you for two reasons. He's coming at you, of course, because he's your enemy, but he's coming at you to inflict, inflict casualty. He's going to try his best to wound you. He's going to try his best to destroy you. He's going to try his best to tear you down, chew you up, and spit you out. He's going to try his best to get you in a spot where you would never be fit to do battle again. <clears throat> and when the enemy would come, they would try their best to destroy the crops. The food that would give 
uh, the other soldiers the energy, the food that would give them the nourishment that they needed so that they could one more time heal, so that they could draw their strength, so that they could one more time go and do battle. That life nourishing food. So they would come to, to kill, to hurt, and then to destroy anything, any part of the process that would make them better and make them where they could sustain life one more time. And it says that a group of Philistines gathered together. And it says they were stomping through the, 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 uh, the wilderness. They were stomping through the woods, going through the land of Israel. And they were out looking for a fight. And they were out looking to see who they could kill today. Looking to see who they could injure. Looking to see what they could, what kind of damage that they could do. And it said they came upon this field full of beans. And as they came upon this field of beans, it said that everybody took off and ran. <clears throat> now you might be thinking, if there's a whole bunch of troops, if there's a whole armed posse or whatever, a group of or a, or a group of army coming at me, that might be the wisest thing to do. And if you think about it, it might not have been such a bad idea. Because if you ever grown beans or, or picked beans or, or had beans out, you know, usually you get the beans going and you run sticks on them or cages or whatever, and they grow up and they're very viney. And, you know, they can get up whatever, waist high, head high, according to how you put your fence above them. But you can get in these things, and when you would go to take a step, you could get tangled up, you could trip, you could fall. Can you imagine if you went to swing and all of a sudden you're sitting there grabbed by the vines? It might not have been such a bad idea to take off and run out of these beans. Maybe you figure the, the field must have been planted on a nice level, low ground, away where there was no cover. They're not in the tree line, they're out in the open. So maybe it might not have been such a bad idea to try to go to a higher place. Or maybe go to a place that wasn't so much uh, junk in the way to have to fight through it. But folks, if you don't start making a stand in what God has given you, then you're just going to keep running backwards. You know what I'm saying? If God has given you a field of beans, then God has given you a field of beans. He didn't say, leave what I have given you and go somewhere else. But he said, I give this to you for your nourishment. I give this to you for your blessings. This is what I have given you. Each one of us has got a field of beans. Each one of us has got a field within us. And when it comes time when Satan starts raising his old ugly head and he starts roaring and he starts fighting and he tries to come at you and he comes at you, you've got a choice. Am I going to stand where I am? Am I going to stand my ground? Am I going to draw the line and say I'm not going to be pushed back? I'm not going to be going. I'm going to stay here <coughs> and fight when the battle comes to me because this is what God gave me. This is what God has blessed me with and I will not give it to Satan. I will not back up. I will not turn to the side. But I will stand because think about this. <clears throat> if there's a field of beans there, somebody took the time to plow that ground. Somebody took the time. Y'all ever, ever planted beans? One bean? Two beans? You know? It is not like this. Thought out. Here we go. None of you going to have that in order anyways. That's the best way to do that garden, wildflowers. Whatever grows, it grows, you know. Somebody took the time to work the ground. Somebody took the time to plant the seeds. Somebody took the time to cover them back up and to water them. And boy, if they was like my grandpa, somebody took the time every day to come out there with a hoe and keep all the weeds out. My grandpa did not like a dirty, weedy garden. He'd be like, come on, boys, let's go here and weed this garden. I'm like, you know, pretty much the stuff's going to grow taller than the weeds anyways. And we'll, but no, you've got to keep it clean. Because what happens when you let the weeds in anyways? They start stealing the nutrients from what you're trying to grow. 
They take away from what is supposed to be growing. So somebody had taken the time to work the ground, plant the seeds, give it the care to weed it, and they had grown up to just what? It says they were there to reap yeah. their harvest. Folks, we've gone too far. Yeah. We've gone too far. We done made it to the part to where the Bible says, and the wheels were white and ripe, and they were ready to be harvested. When it's, you get to that spot in your life, when you get to that spot where it's time to reap the harvest, it ain't time to turn tail and run, but it's time to stand and fight and get what you've given your life for. And it's time to stand there and grab a hold and say, no way, this is my blessing. This is my, these are my beans. I'm not going <coughs> to allow someone to come in and to steal my blessing. Oh, Shama, he, got, he just got, how shall we say, What's that word? He just got all righteousness on it. He just stopped and said, no more. No more, guys. Now, he was already one of the, let me say, one of David's three, three of the, three of the 30 mighty men. He was already with the top three, the Bible says. So he already knew that God could move. He already knew that God could do. He already knew that God could dwell, that God would use. He already knew that because many times he was outnumbered greatly, but because God was in his life, because God was in control of his hands, because God was in control of his mind and his heart, every situation that he had gone through, he was able to overcome. So it says he turned and he stopped. Let's read this last verse again. He turned and he stood in the midst of the ground. I take it there when that body's leaving, he popped the trunk. Hey, where's the body? That's far enough. It says he stood in the midst. He stopped in the middle. And I like this. It says he defended it and he slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great, great victory. You know what else it doesn't say? Now, Shammah, he was a warrior. He was a, he was a great man of God. But if he was just out that day picking beans, do you think he had a sword? I don't know. Do you think he had a spear? I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. Maybe he had a hoe. Maybe he just had a basket. I don't know. But whatever he had, it says that he defended the fruit of the labor. He defended the reaping of the harvest. He defended the final produce that was ready. And it says he defended it and God brought forth a great victory. Yes, we might be thinking, well, I don't have what it takes. I don't have a weapon within my hand. I don't have what it needs to get through to try to defend, to try to stand up. The Bible never says that he had anything in his hand, but it says because he took a stand and he stood there, because he stood in the midst and said, no more, you're not coming to get what I've worked too hard for. No more, you're not coming to get my reward. No more, you're not going to have what God has blessed me with. The Bible says that he won the victory and that God the Lord blessed him and gave it to him. You know, every time Satan comes at us, you know what we got to do? We've got to just draw that line and say, Satan, this is it. This is where I make my stand. I'm not going any further. I'm not backing up. And it doesn't matter what i got in my hand because I've got God in my heart. And if I've got God in my heart and I've got the Word hidden deep within, the Bible tells me that the Word is like a two-edged sword, that it is what defends, it is what cuts. And how did Jesus do battle with the devil? He would say, it is written. The Word of God will cut down Satan every time that Satan rears his old ugly head all we got to do is trust God and believe in God and watch God do the work. Amen. <laughs> when did he come? When did he come? When it was ready for the harvest. Talking about a lazy good for nothing. You ever had somebody do that? Right when the work's about done, they come and pick up the paintbrush. No offense, Judge. They come and pick up the paintbrush and paint the last little door jam. Okay. 
And of course, the boss walks in. Man, you did a great job. You know, you got the paintbrush in your hand. You know? Here's your reward. Oh, Satan's good for nothing, lazy, trash. Comes walking up just to try to get what he can get when all the work's already been done. They say, God bless us. God says, oh no, it's not for you. You see, he does the same thing with us. Just like y'all watch. This used to be something <clears throat> you could always watch happen. Church would have a great big old something. Girls club event. Maybe a good day like this, you know. We're going to have out with our yard sale. Maybe a great kids crusade. We'd have something. And right when you're getting ready, all the work is done. Man, all the work is done. You're getting ready just to kick back. Grab a lemonade and say, whoo, man, we're done. Let's look and see. All of a sudden, Satan comes to attack. You're tired. You wore out. You want him to rest. And here he comes. You watch. It, only, it not only happens in churches. It happens, it happens in everywhere. But that's why the Bible tells us we've got to be ready. Because our adversary, the devil, is roaming to and fro, seeking whom he can or may devour. Yes. And he's looking for you and you and you and you. He's looking for each one of us. He wants to get us so much more. But I, now wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're doing the church's work. <coughs> Are we doing the church's work for the right reason? Go over to Revelation chapter 2. And that word I'm saying, and we're talking to the church in Ephesus and says, hey, look, I know y'all, man. Y'all done the work. Y'all put it out there. Y'all done the best. Y'all been blessed. He says, but there's one thing that you forgot. You've left your first love. You're not doing it for the right reasons anymore. This harvest ain't yours. This harvest, you had nothing to do with it. Folks, we've got to make sure that not only are we working for God. Now, just think about this. If old Shamma would have turned around and just hollered back at the boys, Hey, y'all come back! You bunch of stinking cowards. You bunch of weasels, you know. And watch this. I'll show you how you do this. And chances are it would have been a different two verses. But because he was walking and living in God's will, God wrought the victory. Shammah's weapon was the word of God. His weapon was his love for God. The Bible tells us, but we, though we walk in flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds. In other words, every time Satan tries to put something up against you, if you've got enough God within you, there's no wall that can stand. There's no wall that can't be knocked down. There's nothing that can't be uh, brought over. There is nothing that Satan can put up against you to hinder you or keep you from getting the victory. If you will walk and trust in God, stand in your ground, go into spiritual battle with the devil, but we've got to stand up We've got to take that stand and we've got to take on the battle. Too many times we get too afraid to take on the battle. We don't mind standing sometimes. You ever have a bully when you was a little kid? You know, some bully stand up or, or you're sitting there and they're, they're picking at you and picking at you. Well, you finally get brave enough to make a stand and you stand. And next thing you know, the old bully pow, pops you on. You turn around and you say, oh, I'm good. You know, I thought all I had to do was stand up and you was going to run away. No. But you got to fight back. I remember one time in school, it was so funny. This great big old guy, he was sitting there, he'd been picking on this little kid for a long time. And one day, that little boy finally, he had enough. And that old boy would come up and he had it going up against the wall and I come walking down through here this way. And next thing you know, that, that big old boy said, well, what are you going to do about it? That little kid blew up and it was like dynamite. He was on him like cattle dogs head. He was just hitting and banging and banging. They hit the ground and finally somebody had to pull that little boy off. Because the other boy was crying, he was bleeding. You don't just make a stand, folks. 
you also got to put up a fight. It's easy to make a stand and somebody just keep pushing. Satan is going to see just how far he can push you. He's going to see if he can keep pushing you out of your being filled. And if he can push you out, then he's won the victory. Even though when I stood up, you might have stood up, but you didn't put a fight up. Do you think Jesus, he didn't just go to the cross. He battled through the nails. He battled through the crown. He battled through death itself and won the victory and rose again. We've still got to do the battling. <coughs> We've still got to go through the fight. We can't just go through the motions. My daddy always told me, if you're going to get in a fight, just know one thing. You're probably going to get hurt and you're probably going to get bloody. So if you go in knowing that, then you've got half the battle won already. You won't be shocked when it happens. So when somebody busts your nose, yep, I was ready for that. Let me redo you the same thing. That way when Satan comes up to you and he starts hitting on you, you turn around and you just say, I got one back for you. Now get out of my bean field or the fight's going to keep on going. We have got to stand up. We have got to fight back. Because if we don't, we're giving up the very reward that God has got waiting for us. The reaping. <clears throat> Think about this. We work too hard in churches to build churches up to let Satan tear them down. We work too hard at our jobs. We work too hard getting our lives set up to let Satan tear them back down. We build upon it. We work too hard at our children, parents, to plant those seeds, to plow that ground, to water them and let them grow. To see Satan come in and try to reap the harvest of them as they get a time. You better get your battle face on and get ready and be prepared. Because when Satan is coming after what you planted and what you're trying to reap, then it's time that you fight back and you kick him to the curb as hard and as fast as you can. And you take a stand for God and watch God, the Bible says, watch God right or move, make a mighty, mighty victory. Can we do it through ourselves? No, but you put God on my side. And I don't have to worry about anything. Shama was probably sitting there the whole time. He's doing this battle. Okay, Holy Ghost, you get this one. You get this one. I got this one. You get that one. I got this one. Probably the whole time the battle's going on. Everybody probably, who in the world is he talking to? There goes the stick of the hand. When you get God moving on the scene, folks, it is the most powerful movement that you're ever going to see. When God moves, the Bible tells us that Satan, John 10 and 10, the thief cometh but not for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's what he's trying to do to you. Not your house, I mean your household. That's what he's trying to do to you. Steal, kill, destroy. Jesus says, I am come that I might have life and that they might have it more abundantly great life, a fruitful life, an abundant life. When it comes time to the harvest, because you've done the work, the fields will be full and the reward that you're going to reap is going to be mighty. But first, you've got to take a stand. Stand to your feet this morning. They come to the instruments. Bible tells us <clears throat> in Ephesians 6 and 13 Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand God's looking for a few more shamas or shamas he's looking for a few more men that's, and women as well to take a stand and that no, first you got to put the work in, but your harvest is coming. He's looking for those that are willing to, when it comes time to do battle, are not going to try to do the battle on their own terms, but if I can just get out and get back to the hill, and I can get more manpower, if I can just get out so I'm not tangled up in these old 
bean weeds. God's looking for somebody that's willing to find where they stand. Because think of it this way, folks. If you're going to be that type of person that's willing to fight for God, then you're already where God wants you to be. Because you're letting Him light your path. You're letting Him anoint your way. So you're right where God wants you. And when that fight comes up, well, that's because Satan's realizing they're fixing to make a breakthrough. They're fixing to do something good. God's really touching them. It's time I get up there and hinder a little bit. Time I get up there, y'all seen those crazy commercial, you know, years ago, whatever. The yard looks so pretty, and the little kid comes up and pulls the dandelion, and, and he blows it, and all those weed seeds just go everywhere, and the person's like, no! You know? <clears throat> Satan wants to blow weeds all in your field. And, he'll let, and he will if you'll let him. But you got to take a stand. And when those weeds start coming, grab that hole and get them out. And when that harvest is ready and ripe, don't back up. But keep going after the harvest. And not just keep going after it. What does Shammah do? He protected the harvest. He protected the children. He protected his family. He protected the church. He protected what God had blessed him with. Are you willing to protect this morning? Bow your heads, Father.